So Sister Nancy is going to um, present on media mindfulness in a digital age. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of that, our chaplains, Kara and Terry, will come back um, and lead us in closing prayer and commissioning along with some of our other friends to add in different voices. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive in, Sister Nancy. Okay. Um, S Sister Nancy Usselman is a daughter of St. Paul, a part of the hashtag Media Nuns, and the director of the Pauline Center for Media Studies in Los Angeles, California. She is a media literacy education specialist, an international speaker, theologian, writer, film reviewer, and pop culture blogger for Be Mindful, uh, BeMediaMindful.org and CatholicMom.com with a degree, degrees in communication arts and a master's of theology and the arts from Fuller Theological Seminary. Her award-winning book entitled A Sacred Look, Becoming Cultural Mystics is a theology of pop culture. She's an avid social media enthusiast and can be found on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. So again, so thrilled to have you here and for you to close out our time together today. Thank you so much. So what I'm going to be talking about today is uh, media mindfulness and what that is in our digital age and how we integrate that within our faith experience. So you may wonder sometimes, well, how can faith integrate within a popular media cultural context? Um, and, and this is really a, a way of doing this together. This is a way of doing this. Um, it's a methodology for helping us to integrate that faith, not only for ourselves, but also for those we teach, for all those we form with uh, our faith experience. So I wanna begin with this question, like what does discipleship look like today within a digital media culture, within a popular media culture? And sometimes I wonder, you know, if as Christians we try too hard to make the gospel message really hip and cool, especially for young people today. Um, when in actual fact, what most of them are yearning for, because I talk a lot to youth and young adults, is this image of authenticity. Um, they're looking for joy. They're looking for faith, for faith lived, a serenity and a joy. And it's really what they're craving for most. Um, they want to see it lived out and acted out in all their, in everyday experiences. And we're called to offer that as ministers and teachers of, as, as their social and intellectual influencers and faith formators. They're looking to us. So as to be authentic in a popular media culture, I think the call is to integrate our faith values with our media experience. Now we can turn to St. Paul, right? There's Paul in the Areopagus in Greece, in Athens. And what did he do? He walks among the people in the Areopagus and he started to reflect and, and consider what are the needs and uh, of the people of, their, of the time, the needs and desires. And what, where are the people intellectually and spiritually? Where are they at? He begins by looking at and, and noticing their artists and their writers, their poets, and he sees that altar to an unknown God, right? He begins there and he quotes to them, their poets, as he begins to share the faith with them. He doesn't come right out and talk about you know, passion, death, crucifixion, resurrection of Jesus, but he begins with what they know. And I think today the popular media culture is our Areopagus today. It's the place where culture is created, where the artists, the intellectuals um, gather, they present their ideas, their views of life and the human person, right? The struggles and the joys of all human living, right? He makes St. Paul, Paul makes the faith concrete in the lives that he, of the people he meets, pointing out what they were intellectually seeking, but more so what their hearts were seeking, but perhaps didn't know it. For us, it's about delving in the culture of our day, right? To find that starting point for evangelization, which may not be the faith as a starting point. For many people, it's not. That unknown God for us is the art of popular culture. Right, the stories, as Sandy pointed out, it's about storytelling and that story sharing. And that story sharing happens within our popular media culture. That's in the art and artifacts of the culture, in the, in the movies, uh, television series, social media, YouTube videos, um, video games, all, all of it, online gaming, music, 
can tell so much deep stories and the stories of the human person, right? The struggles of humanity. Um, as evangelizers, after the example of Paul, right? We're also called to teach this way of integration, addressing the whole person, the mind, the will, and the heart in Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. The whole person for the whole the whole Christ for the whole person. Um, our founder who founded, he, James Alberione, founded uh, the Daughters of St. Paul, but a whole group of uh, organization called the Pauline Family, 10 different institutes. And he called, he founded us at the beginning of the 1900s, in the early 20th century, to really take on all forms of media to be, to proclaim the gospel, to transform the culture, but from within it, not from outside, but within. But he was always questioning us. He says, you're not here to reach people from 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, but we're called to reach people today, where they are at today. Um, and he would ask this question and say, where or toward what is this humanity moving? This humanity that is constantly renewing itself on the face of the earth. It is like a great river flowing into eternity. Will it be saved or will it be lost? That question has to burn in our souls and ask us, to, to, what does humanity yearn for? What are those needs of humanity today and how can we address them? And I've been reflecting a lot on this and I believe it's taking a sacred look on the culture. Because the art of the popular culture, if we look deeply, talks about those cries of humanity, right? The, the longing for justice, the longing for peace, the longing to be heard, the longing for communion and connection, for purpose and meaning in life. We see that. We see that in our culture right now, in these days, in our cities. And we see it in the stories of the culture. Uh, we can look online and go online streaming and Netflix and you see so many stories. I mean, just look at some of the stories about relationships. Love is blind or too hot to handle. And they're realizing that hooking up uh, and, you know, just having sex with people and living a hedonistic lifestyle is not an answer. We're still longing for deeper connection. We're still longing for relationships that mean more than the physical. Um, there is a story also on Netflix that uh, Ricky Gervais came out with called Afterlife. And he's a known atheist and he's pretty crass. But the story is about he wrote it and produced it and starred in it. And it's himself as a, a man who lost his wife, he's grieving, he's angry and bitter with everyone and everything, and he's just a real jerk, basically. Um, but he goes to visit his wife's grave in the cemetery, and he sits down and he meets this woman named Anne, and this is what their conversation ends up being. So I just wanted to cut that short, but I want to talk about what, what, what is he saying? It's about uh, that, that yearning for humanity to have some meaning, to have purpose in life. And that's what he talks about. And, and he really realizes that his life has meaning when he starts giving it away, when he starts sharing his life. It's a self-giving love. Um, it's, a, it, it's a leading us to an understanding of the culture. And for us to be able to take that sacred look, is a call for us to be mystics. It takes contemplation and mysticism to see those yearnings of humanity and to bring it out for us, uh, to talk about it, to address it. Um, this is our point of connection as Christians with the culture. Uh, it's that to be a mystic is really a transformative encounter with the divine. It's a way of it connecting. Um, most of us are consumers of media, but we're also creators of media. How do we reach out to people who do not know God, right? Um, and it's a really powerful experience when we start to realize that's where the yearnings of humanity are at. And we could see that in so many different um, aspects of the culture. The theologian Karl Rahner, you know, it leads us to the next level and understanding of mysticism. Karl Rahner says, the Christian of tomorrow will be a mystic or nothing at all. And he wrote that in the 1960s. I think challenging all of us to take that sacred look on a culture that pervades our lives and find God present there and his action there in our everyday experience. My call is to all of us is to be cultural mystics. That's mystics of the popular media culture. 
that means being within it, communicating with it, transforming it from within, um, bringing the gospel into dialogue with it. It's shown in the art of the popular media culture, right? In art, we, it, it forces us to look deeply. Um, if we take that sacred look, we can see what humanity is yearning for. The way of becoming a cultural mystic is through media mindfulness. And media mindfulness really is a methodology that integrates media literacy, that is being a critical engager of the media culture, um, taking those media literacy principles and integrating them with a theological reflection. So as to allow our religious values and concepts to be reflected upon while engaging with the various pop culture artifacts, right? Media mindfulness is really a strategy by which we become aware of media messages that we can create and encounter and can lead to true communion. It's also a safe place where we can talk about what really matters and that is our values, our beliefs, our emotions and our gospel values. It's really the strategy to take a deeper look upon the culture. And we do this by asking questions, by being critical thinkers. Now, I love superhero movies and I talk a lot to youth and young adults. So um, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse has a wonderful commentary, I think, on, on, on a little bit of this integration. And, you know, sometimes we just want to jump into things, you know, jump into, uh, saying what we got to say to the culture um, or just doing what we feel we got to do. Well, in this, in this verse and then into the Spider-Verse, Miles realized he's a Spider-Man, but he realizes there are other Spider-Men and women out there in different, you know, dimensions. And he wants to act right away on it, but they stop him. And this is the comments. It's, it's really, he's talking about, you know, how it's a leap of faith for us to be able to go on. And, and really in looking at the popular culture, it's about knowing our own values. It's values articulation. Um, we have to know our own values in order to be able to communicate that and dialogue with every media experience. And also knowing our gospel values, the gospel values. That's what leads us to help us in discernment. Um, media mindfulness is a lot like Lexia Divina and theological reflection, right? It's an Lexia Divina employs the process, or theological reflection employs the process of, the, of Lexia Divina, and it involves that pedagogy of inquiry. So you take what media literacy is, which is accessing, analyzing, evaluating, participating, and creating, and the view of theological reflection, or Lexia Divina, to listen, reflect, dialogue, and act, and you marry the two together into media mindfulness. It's about asking those questions. What's going on? What's really going on? What difference does it make? And that's the point of our values that come into conversation with it. We question it, uh, the, the media experience that we have with our own values and the gospel values. It's really about creating a culture of discernment of what I experience and receive within media messages. What does it say about deeper human longings? Um, you know, mysticism, as I said earlier, is about seeing grace, but also recognizing that which takes away from the, the human person and cheapens the human person, right? Media mindfulness, media mindfulness is about becoming aware of media messages. What do they really say? And we offer this sense of a media mindfulness wheel. You know, as evangelizers, it's about finding the sacramental, those elements of grace present in the culture, the hungers of humanity, the needs of humanity, so that we can propose Christ as the answer to all of humanity's longings. That's what it means to go forth and evangelize within a popular media culture, to be the presence of Christ and teaching our youth to do the same, teaching our youth to be discerning within a culture. And that's, that's a challenge, it's a really a challenge. Um, cultural mysticism is about being those people who can be reflective on a culture, truly have a profound relationship with Christ but then bring that into all areas of our lives. And faith, and it has everything to say about our whole media experience, our entertainment lives. It's some people will say, well, it has nothing to do. Faith is over here and here's our entertainment experience. Actually, it has everything to do with it. So I, I just wanna propose that to be a cultural mystic, to be media mindful within a culture, teaching this to our youth 
is a great service to our youth because it integrates their faith with their everyday popular cultural media experience. And by helping them with these tools to be discerning, to be questioning, to be critical engagers, is helping them in the future to live their faith in their concrete everyday experience. So um, thank you so much. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, sorry about the technology. That's great. Sometimes, sometimes it doesn't really work. <laughs> so sorry about that. And so the people had questions about the media clips. And so it was Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse was obviously the, the Spider-Man one. Yes. And then the um, Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais, it was called Afterlife. It's a series on Netflix. It was a okay. uh, British series. Awesome, wonderful. Do we have any questions for Sister Nancy? Um, this, is, this is always the funny time of where it takes a little bit for people to type in. I really liked the connection between media mindfulness and Lectio Divina. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that I had ever made that um, distinctive of a line before mm -hmm. um, within with, with those two uh, very different pieces of our lives. Um, at the end of Into the Spider-Verse, which there's two different clips. At first, Miles questions how he can be Spider-Man and, and to live that. He, yeah, and the other Spider-Man tells him, oh, no, it's, it takes a leap of faith. At the end, it, the roles are reversed. And Miles tells the other, he's like, no, you need to go back to your own dimension. He's like, well, I don't know if I can change things. And Miles tells him it's a leap of faith. So both of them learn from each other. Anyway, it's a great way, it's a great conversation starter, you know, using clips, using film and, and popular culture as a way to especially engage our, our youth within the culture to talk about what they know, but always bringing our values into conversation with it and our gospel values. That's just how they make it real in their lives. I know um, a lot of adult forums, adult formation opportunities also use movies as sort of a jumping off place because it is that common language that is sometimes more comfortable to talk about in comparison to the gospel. Mm -hmm. um, so we have a question if if you have a list of films for us to watch. Yeah. So what's your what's your sister Nancy top 100? Oh gosh. Well, you know, on is our that, website. Is that a blog post or something? Oh, yes, on our website bemediamindful.org, we review a lot of films, especially everything that comes out that's popular, especially new things. Uh, right now, uh, obviously, there's been a hiatus in Hollywood, so, but we do stuff on Netflix as well. So on bmediamindful.org, there's film reviews. There's also under resources where we comment on different topics and different areas um, within the popular culture and on different mediums, not only film and television, but also gaming and music. Oh, that was that was an how many question. how many movies do I watch a month? Oh gosh, a lot. <laughs> I'm actually working on a television series. It's a web series right now that's gonna. Uh, it's called Should Christians Watch, and we talk about everything on television. And it's me and two other guys, oh, both Protestant, and we talk uh, together about. Uh, actually, one was my Fuller Theological Seminary professor, <laughs> and we talk about uh, television series that are popular out, like Lion, uh, but like, um, yeah, the uh, Tiger King, and, you know, Too Hot to Handle, and all kind of Afterlife, we talked about this, and we talk about should Christians watch, but more how do we engage with it being mindful and being media mindful. Now, say hot takes with Sister Nancy and friends. Um, the question is, what else does the Center for Media Studies provide? We're, we're actually teach media literacy education and every summer, like in July, we do a media, uh, an uh, advanced certification course in media literacy education and faith formation. So what I showed you about media mindfulness, marrying the idea of media literacy and theological reflection, we do an entire course, certification course on that online. It's the, this is the first year it's going to be online. But we provide that and also film retreats. We provide a lot of film retreats. We call them Cinema Divina. Uh, we do a lot of like reflection, a lot of prayer, you know, praying the news. Uh, we'll give a lot of like uh, ways of having a media spirituality. So that's, that's what we're living in, a media culture. So we live a media spirituality today. 
Uh, and Diane had a question. Um, do you suggest what films to use for different topics? Um, example, discipleship, baptism, probably confirmation. That's always another popular one. We could, and we do on that site, but also you can contact me directly anytime and I'd be happy to give you ideas. And it also depends upon age group. So what's age appropriate? Um, but if you, if you ask me, I'd be willing to give you, we have like lots off the top of our head, so we could tell you a bunch. You, you have know, your so. own um, personal um, librarian video nun going on. Oh, right? we do. Oh, okay. well, we have a lot of movies here. <laughs> so somebody wants to know, praying the news. What, mm -hmm. what is that? Well, I, I know we're kind of getting close to the end of this time, but actually on our website, bemediamindful.org, we have a little guide where you could do that praying the news. So it's like watching the news either on the internet or to, you know, maybe with a group of people is always great because by yourself is one thing, but to, as a group, it's important to pray together. You can watch the news either on television or on the internet and in prayer with the scriptures, bring a scripture passage to it before you watch it and then watch the news together. And then afterwards, turn it off and share about and pray in intercessory prayer together what we heard. And, and it's a really beautiful experience because sometimes we can get caught up in our own world of intercessory prayer, but we're forgetting what's going on, not only just here in our own cities, in the world, in our nation, but also in the world. So it kind of keeps us always thinking outside and, and in a much broader sense of what we as Christians need to bring all people into our hearts, right? To answer, to bring them to, to God. Um, so just an idea, but you can find the like a guide for it. We have a yeah, wealth of resources. Clearly. Yeah, there's a lot there, but um, just ideas and things that we uh, 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 say ideas. And I think that it, th that those are then propagated by so many more. So you've just given an amazing insight into your work and, um, and the Center for Media Studies. So thank you again for, um, for showing up into this new space and sharing your work with us and everything. Thank you.